How is everyone doing today? It's Matt from Code Tech Notorials. Today, I want to walk you through how to make a first person character in Unreal. You can use the, the, the starter one for the first person controller, and it just gives you one. But what if you want to know how to do it on your own? That way you understand how to edit it and stuff. So that's sort of the point of me doing this little tutorial. This is one of the first things I wanted to learn when I jumped into Unreal. And I figured it out. So I can show you all the steps to get a first person controller going. Now I've got a few little random things here, but I'm going to start a new project. That way I can show you from the blank state. And I'm just going to leave it all pretty much default here. We'll call this uh, FPS demo. So this is the point of doing it from a blank state is so that you can follow along from any any current state that your project is in. This will work in general to get a first person character going. So this is the blank state. We've got a little fly around. If we hit play, it gives us like a just a cam that moves wherever. But we can't go through stuff. So if you want to make this your own first person little guy, what you do is you go down here to your content and you right click and make a new blueprint and people and then click character and let's I'm just gonna go with the standard and call it BP FPS character now when we double click on this we get the editor for this blueprint I'm gonna drag it up here along with the other windows cuz that's how I like to do it so in here we have some tabs we have a viewport where we can do stuff with the meshes and colliders for that and an event graph which we're going to use in place of programming optionally you can do C++ programming we'll be adding our controls in this event graph but first the way Unreal works is well let's uh, go back to our other tab here our main one you gotta set up your key bindings in the settings well you don't have to do this but this is kind of the standard for your main character so you go to settings and then I went to project settings and then scroll down to input which is under engine and when you get here you'll find this first area bindings and you want to go ahead and set up axis mappings so you hit the plus we're gonna do a couple more so so this one's gonna be these axis mappings are gonna be for moving around so let's have move forward And the key for this is going to be W, and the scale is a 1.0. And then we're going to have, uh, let's see, we don't actually, hold on, we'll do this one at a time. So on the move forward, I'll hit another plus, and I'm going to put another key on move forward, and that will be S, the backwards key. You can collapse these. It's under keyboard, we're looking for S, there it is. And we'll just give that a negative 1.0 scale. So that'll handle our move forward and backwards. So let's add another one for move right. Move right. And this one is going to be the D key. There it is. And we also want to add a A for move left. There's A, and that'll be negative 1.0 scale okay so now move forward we can access with W or S and it gives us these different scales so this is just the standard WASD of movement and we're also going to go ahead and prep this with a boost we want a boost key like shift so we'll just do shift left shift and we're going to do plus here and do a jump and we'll make that space bar. And that should be good for now, except of course we want look. We'll say look uh, vertical. Call us whatever you want. Um, let's add another axis one for look horizontal. And we'll map this to the mouse X on the vertical. 
or I'm sorry, mouse Y on the vertical, right? Up and this will basically be up and down. Horizontal will be the yaw left and right. So it'll be the mouse X. There we go. And we're looking pretty good here. So this is auto saved as you enter them. So you can just close it. And now we can go back to our blueprint and in our blueprint, we'll now have access to those keys. So we'll go down here and we'll right click and search for move forward. There it is an access event. You can also get an access value. We're looking for the event in this case, cause we're going to handle the button presses. So we'll drag off this and we'll just put a move character. I think is what it's called movement. Yeah, I think this is it. Add movement input. Okay. So we'll do the axis value. Well, the axis value is going to go into scale value, but the world direction is going to be go the way we're looking. So we're going to get, uh, so we want, it's get actor forward vector. There it is. That's this current actor. There we go. Target is self. So, yep, that's the one. And this will move us forward. So this is the move forward. This will also move us backwards because if they press S, it'll put the negative scale value in there and move us backwards. Okay, let's do the move right. So on this, they're also going to do, well, we can copy this and paste it. Same thing. Add movement. And this time we're going to get actor right vector. So we want to add this to the right vector. There we go. Then we can highlight all this with a box select. You can do a right click and create comment. And then we'll just say move forward slash backwards here. And on this one, we'll do move uh, left, right. Okay, so there's a few more things we still got to do here. And let's go back to our map. We want to be able to test this movement, but currently we're still using our little default guy. So it's not the same one and it's doing its, its own thing. So what we got to do here is basically just drag this guy in. And and then we got to go do something with our game mode. I think it's world settings. Yeah, settings, world settings. So we got to pick a game mode or make some game mode. So we'll do a new blueprint game mode base. We'll just call it BP. I'll call it debug game mode because it's just like a test one. And we basically just want to go look at this. I'll save it. It's fine. You might not even need to open it. So, so these tabs at the top are important to get used to working with. It's kind of like the bread and butter of this editor. Okay, so the game mode, we want to just set this as the default one. There it is. And we want to set the default pawn as the one we made. Oh, here it is, BP FPS character. So we want to set it to that. And now if we play, we should have our guy under control. And we do. So it doesn't let me look with the mouse and move the mouse. I know you can't tell, but if I hit left, I go left, right, go right, straight, go forward, and I'm falling off the world. Okay. So forward, I'm running into something. Okay, I'm falling off the world. There's some invisible thing in front of me. I think it might be the other player, the invisible player. Okay. So if I put me way up in the air, I should fall. And I've got some kind of bad size. I don't know what that's about. The player start is bad size. Okay, what is this then? This is my actual player. So let's hit play and yeah, it drops. All right, well the movement works. The left, right, forward, back. There's something I'm colliding with. Anyway, so let's go back into the blueprint character and let's add the mouse look. So let me just make sure I get this right. 
So we want to handle the events look horizontal and look vertical. And we can do add controller yaw for the horizontal. And the value is just going to be the axis value. On this one, we'll add pitch, add controller pitch input. The target is the value. And that's really all we need to do. Let's give it a test. We'll hit compile, save, play. And now we can look around with our mouse. Okay. It's a little wonky. It's actually backwards on the up and down. It feels like I'm flying an airplane. So um, I actually, I think I just did it wrong with the controls. Cause let's go, let's go back to the settings, project settings and input. And we'll see the, this look vertical mouse. Y. I'm going to put it to a negative one. And uh, there we go. Now, when we hit play, it kind of works more as expected. Yes. Naughty. All right. So there we go. That's all it takes to get the look working correctly. Uh, we'll just put look there. And now what else do we want? We had boost and jump. Those are pretty important in standard and FPS games. So let's go ahead and do jump. We'll get that jump action key action event jump that we made in the settings. And when you press it, well, I guess we just want to jump. So there is a default key called just jump or a default thing in here called jump and it applies some standard jump. So if I hit play here, now spacebar jumps and then you can see it's just like the default jump. I'm not going to go over how to configure it because uh, I haven't played around with that myself. Actually, this one seems pretty sufficient for standard cases and you can tell this is a funny thing, but you can tell I was like testing this out and playing with it. This is the jump that PUBG uses. I'm pretty sure because you can do that hop skip backwards thing with it and everything. So we'll just create a comment for this pretty simple jump. And now boost gets a little more complicated. I want to say, cause like how much do you want to boost by is the thing you can hold variables for that. And you do those over here. You just make variables and then you can access them and do stuff. But I just want to say, well, it works off set max walk speed. So there's this max walk speed. And if we do set max, walk if you do a set max walk speed apparently it sets your falling speed too so there's probably going to be a little more involved with this in the long run um, than just setting the max walk speed which i'm not even seeing pop up here I'm gonna look, oh oh i know what i do i gotta do i gotta go character movement i remember this this is so weird uh you do get get character movement then you drag from this and then on this you have set max walk speed so that's how you have to to do it here in unreal it seems like 900 feels pretty good i'm not sure how these scales work but uh I, it's like hard to tell the difference between like 1 and 900 it seems like but then once you get over a thousand something else happens um, or I don't know. Don't take, don't quote me on that. I, I, I was looking, I was trying to figure it out. I don't understand how the max walk speed works. It seems weird. It seems like 1200 to 1300 is a good run speed or even up to 2000 and 900 or so seems like a good walk speed, but, uh, play around with your own numbers. Let me know if you figure out more in the comments below. Cause I don't know what the heck's going on, man. Like, okay, here's the code for the character movement component. So we could just dig in and the C++ could plus code, but I'm not going to do that right now. I don't want to do, do that. So when we press boost, all this goes into here and there we go. That's all we need to do. And then when we release it, we want to do this similar thing. Well, I guess we can just copy this, right? Paste it. And here we go. So when they release it, we'll set our speed back to 1000. So we got a 1000 to 2000. It should get about a two X boost. We'll go ahead and hit play. It's normal walks. So hard to tell in the small, small map. Let me just increase the size of this a bit. We'll, we'll make this one. We'll just delete this one, make this one massive. 
Ugh. There we go. All right, so we got a bigger area. And now we can walk, and then if I hold shift, you can tell there is a bit of speed up. So that is working. Let's see, what else did I want to show you? I don't know what this bad size is. If someone knows, let me know. Um, but in general, this will work. This will allow you to edit it further. There's there's a really basic boost. So what I did in my other one, I'll just drag this over. I don't want to do it all again. I added two variables, added default walk speed and a run multiplier. And then on the event begin play, I set the run multiplier to 2x, set the default walk speed to 900. So when they run it, two X's, and I just have that logic in here. When they press it, add times it by the multiplier. But you know, you can do it however you want. Ultimately, this is probably going to come from like character stats or whatever. So this is this was just my janky way of getting it going to begin with. But uh, yeah, so that's how you do it. That's how you get an FPS character going. Let me uh, let me know, guys. Do you want to see more of these tutorials? Boost. Do you, do you want to see more Unreal tutorials as I learn stuff? And should I just make these videos and teach everybody? Because I, I can do that. It's kind of fun. There's one other thing I wanted to show you guys, but maybe I'll talk about it in the next episode and just keep this one simple and just, you know, getting that basic FPS character going. I guess there's one more thing I should mention about it on my way out. Don't forget to like comment subscribe and I'm gonna go and sh head and show you how to just move the camera here real quick on our way out so I clicked on the viewport I'm in our FPS camera clicked on viewport I'm just gonna add a component for camera and I'm gonna move the sucker up a little bit and forward or back you can play around with it but basically you can get this you know kind of to where a head would be on a human so now we're up a little higher and the thing is, as soon as you add a camera, you notice you can't look up and down anymore. So that feels weird, right? What you got to do is, well, you got this camera clicked on. You just go over to the settings, and there's a setting to uh, to move it. Use pawn controller rotation. So once you click that, compile, save, hit play again. Now look, you can look up and down again. And your so your collider box is that capsule below it. It's gonna it's gonna be a little smoother and well I'm gonna leave it at that you can see though just on your own that you can add mesh in here for your player and go further with it hope you enjoyed I'll see you guys in the next video and stay safe keep coding Matt out